Hello friends, welcome to another video. So today is finally the day to start working on my Regency gown. Now I am greatly inspired by this fashion plate here. It says it's from 1804, but as most of my project has been based in the 1790s, that is more where I'm focusing on, and I'm more taking a lot of inspiration from the reference photo. Now, when I look at the fashion plate, I see a lot more of a springy kind of summer look to it, and because we are no longer in those seasons, I've decided to give it more of an autumnal twist. The fabric I'm using for the dress is this. You can't really see it at all. Let me just unfold this. It's kind of semi sheer uh, striped fabric. I have about seven yards of it. Yes, I measured it out. I have seven yards and it's 55 inches wide. So that is going to be the I guess main fabric I'm using for the dress and I'm really excited for it to come together. Hopefully it'll come together quickly. For the lining I'm using just some plain linen that I had in my stash. So the fabric I'm going to be using for the outer robe is actually this beautiful red and blue shot silk. So I actually picked this up in the fabric district and this is going to be the kind of over robe and if I have enough left over possibly the kind of turban hat hood thing that she's wearing in her hair. So with these fabrics together I think it'll give it a really nice autumn twist and then I'm also going to be creating a bunch of accessories for it. Now because this is kind of a bigger project I'm going to be splitting it up into two videos. So today's video is going to be focusing on the main dress and then the second video is going to be focusing on the over robe and I guess shoes and accessories. And So I'm really excited for this project and I hope it turns out well. The fashion plate also does not show the front of I guess the outfit so I'm going to be kind of making that up as I go. The pattern that I'm going to be using for this is actually from the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking and it is 1790s round gown on page 179. And look at there's a wild abbey! <laughs> Anyways, um, so this is the book that I'm going to be using for the reference. So if you didn't notice, there is Regency in here, which is good. Nicole from Silk and Buckram actually did recreate this gown, I think back in 2018. Um, so hers, she had a very interesting, like, flowy bodice on the front, and I think I'm going to be going with more of, like, a Spencer-style bodice. So we'll see how that goes, and let's get started. Continuing from where I left off in my patterning video, I pinned the newly scaled pattern to my mannequin to see how much I needed to change to make it fit me. The majority of the pattern changes were minor, but I did need to lengthen the center front so I could create an overlap for the bodice lining. Okay, so at this point I have all my pattern pieces. Now, for the back, the back fit good for the most part, so I'm just going to set these aside for a moment and start working on the front piece because that needed the most change. So first things first, this is too low so I need to add some extra material in here to cover the bust and I also need to raise this up just a little bit. So keeping this on the straight of grain, I'm just going to simply cut this out and move it up just a little bit. There we go and to make sure everything goes back on evenly just going to draw a little line here and so I can line that back up again. So I'm going to add about half an inch now first thing you're going to notice is that these do not line up anymore so what I need to do is I need to change the curve and so now these will line up again so just going to put it on that one and then make it join up with this over here so it's a nice curve again and then same for this side so that is to make it larger to do it um, to make it if you want to make it smaller essentially you do the same thing but instead of moving the pieces apart you would instead move them closer together and then you'd fill in the area 
that was missing um, and then just redraw that. Before starting on the mock-up, I'm going to let sponsor Marika take over for a moment. Thank you, Zoe Marika. Today's video was generously sponsored by Merge Dragons. Merge Dragons is a very chill, free-to-download mobile game that I've been playing for about a month now. It is a delightful, infinite puzzle game where you merge pieces together to create bigger and better rewards while unlocking secrets and discovering cute little dragons along the way. I mean, like, look at this guy! Isn't he so darn cute? I want to pinch its cute little dragon cheeks. <laughs> the gameplay is fairly easy. At your camp, there are simple challenges you can complete by merging together objects to earn star points. And outside of the camp, there are more challenging puzzles to complete to earn treasure boxes and more dragons. Because who doesn't want more dragons? I particularly like trying to set up chain reactions to get extra points and pieces while merging the items. And if you're up to the challenge, you just may be able to merge enough pieces together to reveal all the wonders of the dragon world. If you want to try this game for yourself, you can click my link below to download Merge Dragons today. Thank you so much Merge Dragons for sponsoring today's video. Back to you Sewing Marika. Thanks Sponsor Marika. With the pattern alterations complete, it was time for a quick mock-up to make sure that my alterations to the pattern actually worked. Alrighty, so I'm kind of doing the half fitting right now. Obviously, I don't have my understructures on. I fit it on my mannequin, but because I, I always like to double check it on myself before I actually commit to my changes that I've made. Um, so far, this is fitting pretty good. The side seams, I tend to do these on backwards or inside out because I find it easier to uh, make the alterations on myself. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. The sleeve is all right. I think I may, of course it'll fit differently when I have those on, but I may actually bring this uh, over just ever so slightly, just to give me a bit more, I guess, room on the shoulder. <laughs> now, when I'm looking at the sleeve, I don't like what is going, just move that mic so I stop hitting it. Um, I don't like what is going on here with the sleeve. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But there's like some weird drag marks so I'm gonna try kind of twisting the sleeve um, or at least changing where it's sitting first and see if that changes that or I mis might just try a different sleeve this is the sleeve that is in the American Duchess book um, I also have this sleeve pattern which is a single sleeve instead of a two-piece sleeve so if I don't, if I can't get this one to sit nicely, um, then I might just try the two piece or the single sleeve pattern that I have there. Um, overall, if you look at this, it's the same kind of construction that happened with the Rovler Frances, um, where the sleeve is just kind of pulled up, except for instead of having the excess kind of tucked or pleated in the back, it all just kind of gets smooth into the shoulder the back fit it's not too bad obviously this does again change um, once I have my bodice on and everything everything will be lifted up quite a bit um, but overall I think I'm mostly happy with the fit there's like some minor tweaks I think it's gonna be pretty once it's done I have to show you look at this range of motion like that is amazing there's no like arm stuck here the higher your armpit or arm area this the more range of motion you have which is great that is looking pretty snazzy I definitely need to lower the you know what I'm gonna get a marker I want it to come did I get the mark Hmm. 
After tweaking my lining mock-up, I decided to drape my outer fabric over the lining to see how much material I need to add to the bodice pattern to achieve the amount of gathers I desired. I always find there's a lot of fiddling and hemming and hawing when it comes to this part of the process, but once I had it arranged how I liked it, I pulled out my measuring tape and wrote down the measurements. Alright, so I just have to just extend this part then 18 inches, make it 10 inches tall, and it should all fit. That should theoretically work out. Fingers crossed. 1790s is supposed to be simple. I think it'll be simpler once I get things more cut out and past the mock-up stage. Construction-wise, it should go together pretty quickly. It's just learning a new decade, or a new time period, or era, or whatever. Everything takes time when you're learning a new time. <laughs> okay, let's go. With the pattern set, I took apart my mock-up and transferred it to paper. I also created my outer bodice pattern by tracing over the lining and then adding the length and height needed to create the gathers I had draped. And then I began the process of cutting out the bodice. Next, I created the skirt pattern roughly following the American Duchess book. The skirt is extremely full and half of it took up my entire living room floor. These pieces were much too large to cut out on my sewing table as the back piece alone was 85 inches long. So I moved the hall for this part of the process. After cutting out all the pieces, I pinned them with the wrong sides together and stitched them up using a French seam. Now originally I was going to use the Mantua Maker seam as mentioned in the book, but I realized I really didn't have the time to hand finish almost 300 inches of skirt seams. So I have the train pinned up for the moment right now because it is an extra 30 inches longer so I really don't have the room at the moment. But um, one of the things that I was trying to figure out with this project is how they trained their gowns. Because looking at, see, patterns of fashion, 
there's this one here that shows for, I think this is a riding habit, that they tie their train up. But this one also has there are small bands of tape to loop up train. But it doesn't say anywhere in this pattern, um, there's this one, how they actually loop it up. There's like no info in here on how that is looped up. So I've decided I wanted to experiment with it. Um, I know it's mentioned in Northanger Abbey that the two girls who are friends, they would uh, pin up each other's trains, but I can't find any mention online of how the trains were put up. So I guess I'm really just trying to experiment with this and <laughs> see what I can do to figure that out. Because uh, I love Regency trains. But oh my goodness, they are a pain in the butt to move in. Setting aside the skirt for the moment, I began putting the bodice together. I still don't really know why I decided to hand sew most of the bodice, as I was already pressed for time, but I think it was partly because of Kate's video, who is Willoughby and Rose here on YouTube, as she was able to hand sew an entire 1790s gown in a day. For the first step, I folded back the seam allowance of the lining and the outer fabric along the curved edges of the side, back, and back pieces, and ran a temporary running stitch through them. I then pinned the lining and the outer fabric along the neck edge of the back piece and stitched them together, and then turned them right side out and gave them a quick press. Next, I layered the side back lining and outer fabric on top of each other with the right sides facing out and pinned them to the back piece with the outer fabric sandwiched in the middle. Not gonna lie here, I think the next step is kind of magic and the first time I saw this being done, I was so confused. So I then stitched all four layers together with the stitch that has no name but it is sometimes referred to as the English seam. The process for the stitch can be confusing to explain, so here is a close-up to show you what I did. Now, Burnley and Trowbridge does have a tutorial on this stitch if you want a verbal explanation. So this is what the stitch looks like once it's been complete on the inside. And this is what it looks like on the outside. I then repeated the stitch on the other side of the bodice and then set the back bodice aside for the moment. Before I could attach the front and back bodice together, I needed to finish the raw edges of the front bodice. And because I was hand sewing this as well, I decided to add safety pins to the wrong side of the fabric to keep myself from accidentally sewing two of one side. First, I folded the seam allowance in half along the neckline and then temporarily secured it in place with a running stitch. I then folded it once again and secured it with a small whip stitch. And then I repeated these steps along the bottom and front opening. Moving to the outer fabric, I turned the neck edge under by an eighth of an inch with a running stitch. And then carefully turned and pinned the neck edge, creating a casing for a quarter inch twill tape. I then realized I forgot to finish the front opening and quickly remedied that with a quick turn and turn hem.
Then I carefully stitched along the edge of the casing, taking great care not to catch the tool tape as I finished the neck edge. Starting on the shoulder straps, I pinned and sewed the lining and the outer fabric together along the neck edge. And then I pinned and sewed the lining only to the front of the bodice, leaving the outer fabric free. I then pinned the back strap lining in place and the bodice was ready for a fitting. Once the fit was confirmed, I stitched the back lining strap in place and started finishing up the bodice. First I began by trimming away the excess seam allowance in the side seams to a half inch and then pinned the outer fabric over the raw edge. I made a tiny snip into the seam allowance along the bottom of the outer fabric so I could easily finish the bottom edge where the fabric separated from the lining, and then pinned up the raw edge to that snip. Using an applique stitch, I then stitched up the side seam. To finish the raw edge of the outer fabric, I then folded up the seam allowance in half and temporarily secured it in place with a running stitch. I then folded that edge up once again so it then matched the seam allowance and whipped the edge in place. Picking up the skirt once again, I marked the center front of the skirt and cut a 4.5 inch slit down the center. And then I rolled the raw edge and stitched it in place with a very small whip stitch. Moving over to the machine, I then turned the raw edge of the skirt over by a quarter of an inch and stitched around the top edge of it. From there, I measured 18 inches over from the center front slit and pinned a length of tool tape to the skirt and then fold it over the edge to create a casing for that tape. 
and then I carefully stitched the edge of the casing, taking great care not to catch the tape or I would have to unpick it and re-sew it for the drawstring to work. And finally, it has come time to gather the skirt. I know these as cartridge pleats, but I don't think they were actually given this name until the 1830s. So instead of gathering the skirt up with a machine, I hand stitched three rows of even running stitches around the top edge of the skirt. Normally it's recommended to mark out the edge of the skirt, but since I'm working with a striped fabric, I was able to achieve a very even running stitch without marking it beforehand. In the video here, I'm skipping every other stripe, but I actually ended up redoing all this and going back and stitching every line for a finer gather. I'm also using a button thread as this stitching will stay in the dress after it's been gathered up. Once I'd stitched all three rows, I pulled the threads creating an even set of gathers. Finding the center back of the skirt, I then clipped and pinned it to the bodice. To attach the pieces together, I used a fine whip stitch along the ungathered edge, taking care not to catch the tape inside the casing. Once I reached the gathers, I began taking a small stitch in between each gather. This process does take a little while. With the skirt attached to the bodice, I then hemmed the bottom of the skirt by turning it up with a double turn hem and stitching it in place. I opted for the machine at this point because I'd reached that point where I just wanted to wear the dress. Alrighty, today is the day I finish this dress. All that's left to do is the sleeves. I ended up not using the design from the American Duchess book. I ended up going with the sleeve from the cut of women's clothes. I think that design just works better for what I'm looking for. So this is the dress so far. I love it. Um, also, lovely piece of jewelry here from Danes La Mode. Um, I think it's the perfect touch for this outfit. So I'm getting this finished today and I'm really excited. It's time to get back to work. I changed a few things on the original pattern and then marked the changes with a Sharpie on the mock-up before taking it apart. I then transferred the mock-up to paper using the same process I had used to transfer the bodice. And then I cut out both sleeves. And sewed up the sleeve with a French seam. Okay, so I have the sleeves just pinned in on underneath. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that it was sitting in the correct spot before I went and stitched that in. They are looking pretty good. I'm loving how this looks so far. So I guess the next step is just sewing in the sleeves underneath and then this gets pinned and stitched over top and then the strap gets stitched over that finishing off the top edge of this. I obviously I'm not wearing the Regency undergarments underneath, but even like just this, it looks good. I love it. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's turning out so nicely. Okay, time to get back to work. I stitched the bottom half of the sleeve into the arm's eye and then pinned the remaining sleeve over the sleeve strap.
To make sure the pleats are even on either side, I like to use my finger as a measurement because I find it's the easiest and fastest way to quickly transfer it over. Using a running stitch, I then secured the sleeve to the strap. Then I pinned the outer strap fabric over the raw edge. And secured the strap with an applique stitch over the bodice seams and a running back stitch over the shoulder. And just like that, the dress was done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the process. I will have part two out in just a few weeks, so I hope to see you again soon. Bye. More of an autumn, autumnal. Autumnal? Autumn, not autumnal. 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 Alrighty. Fabric that I'm gonna use for you. Blah, 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 blah. That's going to be the main fabric I'm using for the dress. 1890s is supposed to be simple. Not 1890s. 1790s is supposed to be simple. <laughs> I just about slipped.